Semiconductors are so useful electrically because of the way the electrons behave in the crystal environment, specifically in the crystal environment of these materials that become semiconducting. Materials that conduct electricity have a crystalline environment. Semiconductors and metals are uniquely different from each other. First, let's talk about what a electron that is not in a material lattice does. What we see graphed here is the energy dispersion relation for a free electron. Dispersion relation means energy as a function of wave property. In this case, it's a function of wave number k, which is 2 pi divided by the wavelength. Energy, kinetic energy specifically, is momentum squared over twice the mass. An expression that you saw in general physics was that momentum is h bar k for a quantum mechanical object, like an electron. k is 2 pi over lambda, the wavelength. If I made a graph of the energy versus the wave number k, it would be a parabola that goes through the origin. That's the energy dispersion relationship for a uh, free particle. If you take a free particle and put it in a crystalline environment, things will change a little bit. So this is the energy versus the wave number inside of a crystalline environment, whether it's a metal or a semiconductor. It's not being distinguished here at the moment. I'm calling k now, p over h bar, the crystal momentum because its features are related to the lattice constant of the crystal. If you look at this graph, first thing you might notice is it is the parabola, but it has been disturbed. So what's going on at these places? The parabola starts to deviate. It starts to flatten out here. And then it jumps, makes a leap across this gray forbidden region. It starts out flat and continues and becomes flat again, and again makes a jump. And there are actually several of these gray forbidden regions called band gaps. An electron can have any energy except for the energies in these gray regions. But an electron can have any momentum. Any wave number can, can belong to an electron. But at a certain wave number, it's going to make a jump. And this is referred to as the Brillouin zone edge, are these vertical dashed lines. This is a, a consequence of the periodicity of the potential energy. This is the dispersion relation for an electron that's not free, but it is in a crystal and it's able to conduct through a crystal, maybe. Let's talk about the, the maybe here. First of all, these gray areas are forbidden energies. The electron can't be in them. I'm going to make a similar uh, sort of diagram, but I'm going to change it. I'm actually, actually make it a little more tangible, because right now the horizontal axis is something that is very abstract to us, the crystal momentum, which is a, a kind of wave number. Instead of that, let me make this diagram where I have the energy of an electron as a function of just where it is. Let's picture our metal one-dimensionally here. The electron is shooting in a line, and so we'll consider the energy along that line. The only reason I'm doing that is I want you to start to get used to energy diagrams changing across a distance. So I have this energy level, and it's just a constant. I'll call it E sub V, where V is for valence. That's an energy level that defines the bottom of that forbidden band. At energies below this energy level, there are a lot of electrons, but they're fixed in place. They're, they, they're not free to flow. They're bound to atoms. Electrically speaking, they're not very useful. We call it the valence band, is all of the, the energies below that level. It is filled with boundary electrons. There's another energy level, the conduction band. Any electron that is above this energy level is mobile. It's our conduction electron. Between it is the forbidden band where the electrons cannot be. They just cannot have an energy that in this range. The width of this band is E sub G. G is for gap. E sub G is E conduction minus E valence. If you take the difference between the conduction band edge energy and the valence band edge energy, you have a gap energy. And so the conduction band is filled with the electrons that are free to move. Now there's one more energy I want to show you, and that's the Fermi energy. 
E sub F, F is for Fermi, as in Enrico Fermi, F-E-R-M-I. That's the highest energy level that electrons have in that crystal, at least at zero temperature. At higher temperatures, they can be thermally excited to even higher levels. So if we just consider what's going on at low temperature, very low temperature, this is the highest energy all electrons have. All electrons in the metal have an energy of the Fermi energy or less. The conduction band can have a lot of electrons in it for metal. Nobody lives in the forbidden band, and the people in the valence band can't go anywhere. A metal is characterized by having a lot of electrons above the conduction band edge, E sub C. And so they're free to move, as opposed to a semiconductor, which, first of all, has a typically larger band gap. More importantly, there are no electrons residing up here. So uh, well, what makes a semiconductor a good semiconductor is that the valence band is just perfectly filled. All of the electrons in the material manage to fit at E sub V and lower. There are enough states available to house all of the electrons. And so there aren't any electrons up here in the conduction band, and so a semiconductor is really an insulator, and in a sense, yes, except that the band gap is small enough that you get to room temperature, and some of these electrons will make it up there just by thermal agitation. They, they have enough vibrational thermal energy that some of them just make it up to the conduction band edge, and they stay there. They can move around. And so at room temperature, a semiconductor does have a little bit of conductivity for sure. If that band gap were bigger, you'd have an insulator. So those are the three situations we can have inside of a crystalline environment. Uh, metal, where electrons are populating the conduction band. A semiconductor, where all of the electrons just fill the valence band perfectly. And if they do get up there, it's only by excitation. And an insulator, where the band gap is so big, you just can't get electrons up there, period. Semiconductors become conducting because the electrons can get up above the band gap. There are really three ways I'll talk about here for that to happen. There's the thermal excitation, where the, the electron just has enough vibrational thermal energy that it, it, it sneaks up there. There's doping, which is what we practically do with semiconductors, where we put states in the gap and then have a very small ionization energy to, to get electrons in the conduction band. And then there's photoionization, where you send a photon along and it hits a valence electron and it gets notched into the conduction band. And that's the principle of operation of a photodiode or other, other photoconductive materials.